Many people just want a car that's not too complicated, not too expensive, not too unreliable, and just simple and affordable. That's right, and it really burns me to the soul when I see people go out and spend their hard-earned dollars on a car like this. So I'm gonna share a list of the only affordable cars you should even consider if you're looking for a new set of wheels. Let's get into it now. The first one on my list that you definitely have to give a look if you've been looking for something affordable, economical, and get great bang for your buck is this little car right here. Now, as a matter of fact, it's so good that we actually end up buying one for ourselves. It is no longer the type of car that is considered boring as sin. It's no longer that vanilla yogurt, and it's no longer that car that only old ladies priests and nuns drive around in. No, it actually has a little style to it and that's a big reason why I recommend this because it's affordable. It starts at under $30,000 for base trim, gives you a four cylinder engine and front wheel drive and it actually is a nice vehicle to ride around in. But let's take a look and show you some of the details because I mean the modern day Camrys do have nice accents like that and you do have a set of double exhaust tips. This one here is SE, it's just base sport model but it has the all wheel drive system. So this one's been updated and you get for an extra couple of bucks, you can get all wheel drive, predominantly front wheels turning and aggressively grabbing at the asphalt. We do get a set of alloy wheels. There's no hubcaps here and it's not cheap. That's the real deal. I mean, even the handles, they all wear well. And some of these cars do come with sunroofs. Our car actually came with an SE all wheel drive and a sunroof. The interior is actually well put together. And while there's a lot of hard wearing plastics, it isn't necessarily Audi territory. It does look nice and it's ergonomically friendly. The aggressive rocker panels that actually look very, very stylish. And along the front, it does have a great set of headlights, no longer of the bland headlights like you find even on a Ford like this vehicle over here. Toyota is actually stepping things up with a lot of great styling detail, specifically on the sport editions like we see right here. Now Camrys have always been that type of car that's never offended. It's always provided easy motoring, affordable. They rarely break and when they do, they're very cheap to fix. And that's always been the fun and frivolity. Did you know that a base model SE was tested by an independent tester to get as much as 45 miles per gallon on the highway? They get great and amazing fuel economy. So they're easy to live with there. They're reliable. And other than when you go back about a dozen, 15 years, there was a particular engine that had a little bit of oil consumption issues, some oil sludge problems. But generally speaking, most of those have long sailed away. And clearly that's all in the culture. Toyota builds and chisels away until they eventually get that right. And then they don't quickly flip the page on that and go to another design. They stick with what they know. And that's the beauty with this car because this particular one's outfitted with a two and a half liter four cylinder that makes about 202 horsepower and it's made it up to an eight speed automatic transmission there. In a world where everybody now is going to CVTs, those elastic band transmissions, which are horrible and they lurch and they drone and they just don't drive very well and they're higher maintenance. Toyota kept an actual eight speed automatic torque converter type transmission in this unit. It is great. And even better is that you can step up to this vehicle and do something different under the hood. Yeah, if you want a little bit more spice in your driving experience, you still get the eight speed automatic transmission. You can still opt to either a hybrid, there's hybrid versions of this with four cylinder hybrids, as well as you can get the V6 engine. That's right, one of the few manufacturers that have still hung on for dear life for that great and glorious naturally aspirated engine and drivetrain. 300 horsepower, in fact, zero to 60, and you're barely over five seconds for that version. Even this four cylinder version can still whop off a zero to 60 in seven and a half seconds. So neither of them are boring. It's just the V6 is actually the sweet spot. It's a very peppy, fun, and sportier type of engine and drivetrain. That's the type of car I would recommend to anybody on a fixed budget that doesn't want to worry about reliability and just wants an easy car to live with that will likely last three or four or 500,000 miles. Consumers Reports rank this car very, very high. It's now slid up the ranks and constantly battling with Toyota and Lexus for top spot for reliability. JD Power and Associate gives it great grades. These little Mazdas are absolutely fun to drive around in. They're sportier than a lot of other competitors. For example, like the Toyota Corolla, is a much less frisky vehicle to drive around in. And this here definitely has its own look and unique style. Now, not everybody loves this hatchback design, but it definitely is interesting and stands out. And I truly believe this is one of the top three best relatively affordable cars on the market. I mean, yes, you have some really cool designs like on these taillights. Of course, this is a Mazda 3 and it's the all-wheel drive, as I already mentioned. Simple little handles, easy to use and won't break. Basic mirrors, and that's the key here. But not everything's basic because you also do get a 
sunroof on these vehicles, and the interior is actually nicer than any of its competitors. Some might argue this is almost into the base luxury territory. To the front, you'll notice they have a very unique looking squinted style of headlight. You really can't mistake that front grille, looks quite unique, and I love that look. It's clean, especially on colors like this, the white or lighter colors like white and gray looks great. Yeah, you have this great little chin spoiler on here, but it's really more about what's under the hood of these modern day Mazda 3s. Yes, again, as mentioned previous in the other car, the Camry, this one actually comes with a torque converter automatic transmission. Now we're talking about a six speed auto or we're talking about a six speed manual gearbox. My personal choice would be the six speed manual, but you can only get that with the front wheel drive. If you want the all wheel drive system, you're gonna have to step up to the automatic. Now there's two engine configurations in this particular vehicle too. The 250 horsepower turbocharged version gives you blistering performance from zero to 60, five and a half seconds. But you can opt out for the base model. It's a two and a half liter naturally aspirated four cylinder that gets 28 miles per gallon on the city driving as well as 38 on the highway. So it does very, very well, very similar to the Camry, but yet this car is a little bit more sporty to drive. It has more of that performance oriented aspect to it. And truly because of its reliability and high levels of it, it's just an easy car to drive, long distances, great fuel economy, easy to maintain, and truly one that I could recommend to my daughter, to my son, to my parents, or I would even drive it because I think these cars actually look great. It even has a lot of the other widgets, Apple CarPlay, as well as along with all the safety nannies you would anticipate here. Now Mazda has gone through ups and downs and I know I've talked to people that said, oh, you know, this Mazda was a terrible car. It rusted, it had engine problems and coolant leaks. Yes, they've had some ups and downs. I even had rotary powered engines. I've had Mazda RX-7s and you know their RX-8 with the Renesis engine? They're not necessarily the most dependable but they're very niche type of car but when Mazda gets into something their turbo fired power cars that they want for just general driving and general population they know how to work out the bugs and these cars are spectacularly reliable honestly love them they look great and truly a car that I would recommend to anybody that I care about and the next car that definitely I'm going to recommend every single time is this car right here because of its high levels of reliability durability long-lasting engines and drivetrains and there's a lot Lot of different configurations in these generations what we're looking at clearly is a honda and if you haven't figured this out this is a civic yes the honda civics now have grown in proportions you know it's not the civics that we knew to grow and love way back in the 70s and 80s that were tiny little junk boxes instead what we actually have is a car that's substantial in size and so you don't feel like you're giving up a lot on space you're not giving a lot up on technology and you're not giving a lot up on performance. Reliability, there's been a few ups and downs along the way, but I wanna explain a little bit about that and just emphasize the fact that this is a must have car for anybody that just wants reliability, great fuel economy, which you can get 28, 38 miles per gallon city highway, depending on the engine configuration. But let's talk about that. These are absolutely great cars. And did you know Car and Driver actually ranked this car 10 out of 10 overall from their perspective. So it definitely makes the grades from a brand new drivers and value perspective. But we know that Honda definitely has reliability all bundled up in this piece. But let's take a quicker look. You know, it has some great touches. We have these great chrome details along here, a wonderful set of headlights that aren't too techy. They're probably likely going to be fairly affordable if you have to replace some parts on there. You do go at beautiful alloy wheels and of course a little flared out rocker panel that gives it a little bit of extra style. And the interior is actually quite well stapled together. Great materials, well wearing. It's not luxurious by any means and the Mazda is certainly a step above, but it wears well and it's never going to wear out. We also do get a sunroof on top of many of these models. Great little tail lights. And the whole styling piece is variable depending on which model. You get these different base models. You can go all the way up to an R which has big wings and all kinds of other details on it. And what do the base models get you? Well, without talking about the R, that's their fire breathing hot rod front wheel drive car that rips up the Nürburgring. No, we'll talk about the mainstream cars that most people are going to likely buy in civic territory. You get a base two liter naturally aspirated engine, 158 horsepower, and you can actually, it is primarily front wheel drive, but you can actually made it up to a manual if you get it in the hatchback version. If you get it in the sedan version of the Civic, sorry, you're stuck with the CVT. And so the CVT, the continuously variable transmission, isn't necessarily the, the best transmission that is known to mankind, but in fact, it works in Honda and Toyota for some reason, do better jobs in keeping those 
without significant problems. A couple things to note, Hondas, there's been a few concerns over the years, but a lot of cars now, not exclusive to Honda, but the soy wiring. So there's wiring that goes through the car and the chassis that is subject to mice and rodents chewing away on because it's biodegradable. So it's meant to actually break down over hundreds of years and it won't just stay as plastic synthetic materials in the soil behind you. And then of course, we're talking about that 1.5 liter turbo four cylinder engine, which is the upgrade from the two liter. And that's the engine that most people are gonna find themselves with. That's 180 horsepower, turbo 1.5. There's been a few talks about oil and fuel dilution issues, but Honda's addressed that. They've come up with a, a way to manage and mitigate different fueling, maintenance conversations, as well as some tuning. So basically what you have here is a car that ranks very well, cheap to fix, amazing on fuel, and is absolutely a, a blast to drive. So the Honda Civic is a car that I would recommend to anybody, family, friends, or even the Pope. And with all of that said, check out that right there, popular video about the worst car brands you could ever buy, and I would die before even going there. Hope to see each and every one of you on the next one. We'll see you real soon. Bye-bye.